Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. Mangus Hope to my podcast, right? Sam Brownell, how you doing, buddy? Not too bad, how are you? Uh, surviving. <laughs> the heat's gone down a few degrees. Thanks, big old thunderstorms. Yeah, yeah you'll notice the change of location because only one of our places has AC and it is not mine. So here we are. <laughs> Woo, thanks to the nursing money that comes to me every now and then. Um, so, lots happening with the Winnipeg Jets. The offseason has been rocky lots but also not a lot happening yeah well, i, I mean, feel like gotta create a lot of drama i guess within our circle so we can keep talking about the jets well there's a lot of i think there's a lot to speculate about i think i can't imagine they're going into the season as is so, so we're not, gonna we're gonna throw some things at the wall and see what sticks yeah so i guess we should go to the first question um do you think the jets run it back because that's been the phrase everyone's using these days Run it back is in the sense of... We're going to keep more or less the same team, minus Stastny and, like, two others. Uh, I hope not. I don't think that's... Even with the addition of the coach, I don't think that's the answer. I think there's toxicity in the room that needs to be dealt with one way or another. I think after a guy basically says he doesn't want to be here and starts to try and force his way out, you have to kind of do something about that. So which individual? Because it feels like there's a couple. <laughs> well, that's the issue. Is I I think at least one of PLD or Wheeler gets moved. I don't think you go into the season with both of those guys. Um, there's issues with both of them. If it was going to be PLD, you would have thought it would happen at the draft, but maybe Montreal just wasn't offering enough, and I'm guessing no one else wants him because he's openly said he wants to be in Montreal, but you see guys get rented all the time for the end of the season. A two-year rental to a potential contender could be a really good thing for that team. I mean, he's a great player, plays hard, hard to play against. Didn't have the offensive numbers, and now I'm going to start getting negative on him just to make myself feel better when he's not on the team anymore, but... I mean, he had 33 less points than his winger as the center. Who, uh, Wheeler? Or uh, PLD? PLD. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, Kyle Connors. Kyle Connors, just, unreal. unreal. But 33 less points than your winger is... Substantial. Like, but that's okay. not... But, I mean, you know, he had 60 points. That's a good season, but, I mean... Well, you're not getting an 8 mil for 60 points. No, I don't know who's saying that PLD should be an 8x8 eight eight deal that's... Foolishness in my world, and I've been yeah. saying that since the start of the off season. Like I believe that PLD should be a five by five guy, and if the Jets were going to keep him for that long term, but um, our rights and all that stuff kind of goes out the window, and with the salary cap going up in a few years, <coughs> five by five doesn't make sense. But either way, eight million dollars doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I also, I also don't think PLD would have signed five by five. No, I think like he he can get more somewhere else, even if he were in a city he wanted to be in, I don't think he'd sign that 5x5. Five five. I think he'd want minimum six. Well, like, he's got his family within the organization, like his dad's working with the Moose. So, you know, you bring him here, there's a French community in St. Boniface. Like, there's... The the reasons that <laughs> Habs fans are trying to come up with why PLD should go there, it's just like, why? I get he was born in Quebec, but... He just wants to... He's a Canadian's guy. He wants to be there. And I, I think ultimately he's going to end up there one way or another in a couple of years. Even if you could sign him for three, get that one extra year, would you? Yes. On like a reasonable deal, like a five or five five. I would. I would go six six by three. Six by three. I I agree. I think keep him because that's the Jets' window is. So what happens when uh, Hellebuck's contract expires and the Jets haven't gone past the second round? <laughs> Like, hey, let, hey, let's, hey, be hey, let's be honest. Let's be honest, though. They made it to the third round. Yeah, <laughs> they, <laughs> they got they, they got they over Nashville. It, they made it to the conference finals, and if they didn't have to play Nashville in the second round, they easily could have beat Vegas. They were just beat up. But I digress. And Paul Maurice didn't switch up the lines. Um, that's but where I blame. Either it. way, like if Hellebuck wants to resign here, and you think your team can still contend with the core of guys that you have, you have to resign him. He's a Vesna winning goalie. You oh, can't he, just let him. You can't just replace that. No, but I mean, at the same time, if you get to the end of two years from now, Hellebuck's, you know, if he hasn't won and he says he wants to be on a contending team, 
the Jets just aren't that right now. Like, listen, I like the team. And- Two years is a long time. I think the Jets still have a really talented hockey team. I think you just need to... There needs to be, one, a different voice in that room. And maybe Rick Bonus will be able to rein these guys in. Maybe he'll be able to kind of figure out what was wrong with that room. Whereas Maurice was more of a guy who kind of just let things happen. And it, it ob- very obviously played favorites. So I don't think Bonus is going to do that. And that structure might translate into more wins and more success. Yeah, it's fair. That's uh, that actually makes a lot of sense. And I mean, like we've talked about it quite a bit ourselves, where it's like we think that so many guys are going to be taking a step forward. Logan Stanley should be taking a step forward with bonus, and all I these think young so. Guys. I, and I think the young guys are going to get more of an opportunity as well. You look at well, one Cole Perfetti had injury issues. He probably should have been with the team all year, if we're being frank. But he wasn't to start, and then got injured. But he was showing some promise, and I think he'll take that next step. And you look at a guy like Billy Hanola or Dylan Sandberg, if they get the opportunity to play in Rick Bonus's system, I think they're going to take massive steps. It's just a question of, are you going to move a Brendan Dillon or I'd, I'd rather it be Brendan Dillon than Dylan DeMello, but are you going to move one of those guys to open up an opportunity for one of those young players you drafted in the first or second round to come in and show what they can do rather than just sitting in the press box or dominating in the AHL? See, and I'd argue that it'd be Logan Stanley be the guy to trade rather than DeMello or uh, Brennan Dillon there. Just because, like, I haven't ever seen that real grit and strength out of Logan Stanley. Yeah, he'll get into fights with people, but he just stands there and holds and throws a couple knuckles and that's it. I think like, having I, that big presence is almost enough. If I would know. rather have Brennan Dillon be my physical presence because he'll kick someone's ass if he needs to. Losing Logan Stanley scares me because what if he just turns into that... But you can always player. say, what I know. If you know that. I know, but you know what you have with guys like Brendan Dillon. But, and I don't think it's that much further ahead, at least from what I saw last year, I don't think it's that much further ahead than Logan Stanley where you're going to give up the younger guy who's been in your system the whole time as opposed to keeping Brendan Dillon. But if you find out, like let's just say you move on from Dillon and then all of a sudden you find out that your back end isn't as big and scary as it actually is and everyone realize how, realizes how soft Logan Stanley is, it's it's going to be a complete gong show on the back end. You need Brendan Dillon there. I would rather move Stanley and be wrong and have Sam or, yeah, yeah, it, Samper it's, playing it's not, more often. It's not 2010. It, like, you don't need these big bruisers. You, you don't, but you do need somebody on the back end just be like, hey, don't even come close to my goalie, otherwise I will come and grab maybe him. Dylan Stamp, maybe Dylan Sandberg will take that next step this year and be able... Like, he's not a small player. No, he's, what, 6'3", and two... I couldn't tell you his weight, but I feel like <laughs> he's 6'3". Yeah, he's... If I could find it, that would be fantastic. But he's a big guy, and I mean... Like, yeah, you're saying back end. He's 6'3", 190. Okay. At 23 years old. Yeah, so he could probably easily put another 20 pounds on him. Easily. He just has to get used to that kind of... And you have Adam Lowry on the front end, who's willing to fight... I mean, he's shown it. He's willing to fight anyone in the NHL. Oh, yeah. And... And, I mean, Nick Ehlers every now and then wants to go fight anyone. I mean, Nick Ehlers, he'll he'll keep one glove on, grab the visor. (laughs) He'll, He'll chuck him with big guys, small guys, doesn't matter. Love Lisa from Fighting <laughs> Healers. Um, yeah, so lots going on. What What are your thoughts on uh, Shevel Dayoff's season so far, and what do you grade his off season? I don't know if he's done enough to get it grade. <laughs> I was really happy with the draft. I thought they did a fantastic job uh, in the draft. They took some swings, which is nice to see. I don't. I feel like right now, as far as free agency goes, which I know we're going to get into free agency in a bit, but it feels like a bit of a calm before the storm. Uh, I think once Nazem Qadri signs somewhere, there's, the floodgates are going to open a bit because teams are going to know, okay, we didn't get that guy. Who else is there for us to go with? What are the floodgates for the UFA market, though, right now? like it's, I've, There's I've still gone... a lot of... Of all right hockey players. Who, Brett Connolly? Uh, Phil Kessel. Phil We're going to get to that <laughs> later. But, so I, I don't think the Jets have done enough to maybe justify a grade. If I had to give one, like a D. It, it has not been very good. No. But uh, I mean, aside, from, aside from the draft. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I was a D minus, like letting Comrie and Svech go. I mean, we still don't know about Svech, but Comrie leaving and and so I, I money think, not being. I think reason. some of the issues, it it has to be money. I think both of those guys not letting them get to restricted free agency. I think the issue was they're going to get too much if they go to arbitration, and it's going to handcuff the Jets into dealing a guy like PLD for not enough. Now the Jets at least have control of PLD and can try and get what they want for him. Whereas if Svechnikov and Comrie, like if you get Comrie those 90 minutes, if you uh, tender a qualifying offer to Svechnikov and they go to arbitration, they're going to get too much money for what the Jets can afford. I guess. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't, I don't know. I guess like you kind of talk to your guys and you find out what they're thinking before. Maybe they did. I guess. We don't, we don't, don't know what's know. going on in those because rooms. We don't know what conversations have been had. I still really hate the Eric Comrie thing, but you get him those but extra 1.8 million minutes. million. Dollars. $1.8 million for Comrie. That's but, twice as much as David Riddick got. Yeah, but I mean, would so, you rather take the mystery box in David Riddick or do you want a guarantee guy in Comrie? Like, you just watched yes, Eric Comrie. Comrie had a really good season last year, but I hesitate to call him a guarantee guy. I would have loved to see him back, but he played a handful of games. But every like, game, he not... gave the Jets a legitimate chance to win those games. Absolutely, but are you willing to pay a guy $1.8 million for 16 games? And hopefully he gets more next year, but he played 16 games. But if, okay, so you're, you, Shevel Dayoff is the GM. He can talk to his coach and be like, listen, man, like, we're going to get our other guy in a little bit more because Hellebuck is obviously becoming too tired and overworked. Like, yeah, you've seen that I, I agree. I, and I hope Riddick gets some more time. But, like, yeah, you say a question mark in David Riddick. He was in a terrible situation last year. He said it himself in his Six, media availability. Yeah. He's like, I played once a month which probably isn't going to be much different than what he does next year. But he's a guy that I think can step up if he starts to get those consistent minutes. God forbid something happens to Hellebuck. If Riddich needs to start getting those consistent minutes, he's a guy, he's been an NHL All-Star. Yeah. He's a guy who's been a starter. I think he can It's it's a very low risk move for the Jets having him as their backup because like we were saying when Comrie was going to be the backup going into next year, we were all saying he was going to be terrible. We didn't think he was the guy, and he proved us wrong. So I think we have to give Riddick a chance here. And I put all of my trust in Wade Flaherty, and he's an unbelievably good goalie coach, and I think he's going to get the most out of David Riddick. Yeah, well, so uh, Big Dave's career numbers are a 290 goals against average, 905 save percentage. Last year with the pa uh, Predators, 375 goals against, 886 save his percentage. So it, there is a good chance. Real that regression last year. He's got to get back over nine I think, for the save percentage. I think Riddick is one of those guys who should not be a backup. He should be a 1B option. So it's like you're swapping between him and whomever so i don't yeah. know if him I, I don't disagree with right. that i just i hope whoever like we know it's riddich yeah i hope he gets more games 20 minimum yeah i'd like to see hellebuck at least take 60 games or like you know take even if you give hellebuck off. a couple games in a row off to really like reset and get that that back but i don't want to see him play back-to-backs anymore that's no. absolutely absurd I don't think anyone else in the NHL does that it's just Hellebuck and he's an unbelievable goalie and he loves his minutes but at some point you have to say okay is it time to maybe let other guys get some minutes well, so I can rest and be my best come playoffs because we all know the Jets are making playoffs next year <laughs> I love the optimism because <laughs> I've been saying the same stuff online too because uh, I, I just think everyone's going to take a step forward here um, Harkin signed last night, eight fifty. Was happy years. about that. That's a that's a I'm steal because uh, I think Harkins is going to take a step forward under our new head coach. Bonus, I think he's going to be playing closer to thirteen minutes a game rather than the nine thirty he was playing under Maurice and Larry. I follow you on TikTok. I know. I, I know agree. It. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. I think Harkins can play a bigger role than he has played in the past. Um, he didn't like, have great offensive numbers last year, if but, I'm remembering. But he's a great but, defensive player. Uh, exactly. So I think he could be a mainstay on that third line with Adam Lowry. 
or he could be the center on the fourth line. I don't think... I hope the Jets don't do the classic Jets thing and sign a 35-year-old center for a league minimum to play on the fourth line. I'd rather see uh, Jansen Harkins do it with um, David Gustafson. I've, I've always liked Gustafson. I think... He, what, got into two games last year? It feels like Gusto only got two games, maybe yeah. four. Two, he, so he got two games with an average time on ice of two minutes and 28 seconds. That's not a whole lot of opportunity for the guy. <laughs> like, that's, you can't, that's just, you can't have that. No, it's like, you make your first mistake on your first shift. I get it. Everyone wants to score on their first shift, but not everyone's going to be Mario Lemieux. I, yeah. Or, uh... <laughs> Shoot, I lost who did that in faster than Mario Lemieux. I think it was Luke Gadzik scored technically faster than Mario Lemieux in his NHL career. And I, I mean, I feel like if you give him that opportunity, he has some skill, he's got some size, I think he needs more. So, he's played 28 career games, only one goal, no assists. Not great numbers. That's average average time on ice, ice time. 5 minutes and 50 seconds. That's nothing. You're sitting... For 20 minutes between getting on the ice, how do you stay warm? How do you, and I get I get that's part of being a fourth line guy, but on most teams, those guys are getting more minutes. Mm-hmm. Maurice loved to run his first two lines into the ground, and I think we're going to see that change under bonus. So I think a guy like Gustafson will also benefit, and I think he and Harkins together on that fourth line because they're both centers. Swap them in and out. I, I think. Well, or have one of them play wing. Yeah. But I think together they could be very reliable defensively and put up some momentum swings and some put up a few numbers. I don't know how much scoring there will be, but I think they have that ability. Yeah, uh, it's in the same boat. But I'd like to see at least 11 goals out of Harkins this next year and probably up to 14. I think, I think he could get double digits yeah. for goals. I'd like to believe in that and um, probably even 20 points altogether this year. 22 is yeah, nice it, it, it depends on how they use them. And there's so much question around having a new coach coming into the room. You never know how guys are going to react, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I always forget about Toninato. Oh, right? <laughs> but he's a, I like him. He's, he, a good, he's a good player. Well, I mean, man, thank him for like that beautiful black and white photo at uh, Morrison. Oh, that was wedding. fantastic. So good. I was a little heartbroken that uh, Eric Connery's the only guy in that photo not coming back guaranteed. Like, yeah. that one killed me so much. Yeah. I, the Jets have done Comrie so dirty over the years. Right. Letting him just get claimed off of waivers over and over again. They always bring him back. He'll find his way back to Winnipeg. <laughs> It'll just probably be after this two-year contract. Can you imagine in 10 years, he's the goalie that wins the Jets the Cup? I, it's a storybook ending. I remember when the Jets drafted him and watching him in juniors and thinking, oh, that's our guy. Like, that's our next goalie. And then... <laughs> Out of nowhere, this American kid who was playing junior in Texas comes in. Comes in from the <laughs> league that no one's ever heard of. Yeah. Thanks, what a Connor. draft pick. Well, steal of a What of a draft pick. pick. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, yeah, Harkins, I like that. I think that's, like, really the only positive from Shovel Day Off as a, as a whole this uh, summer. Yeah, Besides there's the been draft. a lot of whatever moves. Yeah. Lots of... Yo, Alex stop Dimitri. signing lefty for the love of God. <laughs> Just stop it. It's enough. Alex There's... Amigos from the AHL. That was a <laughs> signing and a half that I am overly excited for because I think that guy's actually going to see some ice time. I, I think, yeah, I mean, lots of depth signings. Yeah. I think he needs to make one splash, and I think that's a good... Well, they've uh, got $4 million in cap space after they signed PLD and Appleton is what I figured. Okay. So $4 million, we have been looking at cap friendly, trying to figure out who are the Jets going to bring in. And like, you're not going to bring in Kadri for four schmel. You're no, not going to bring But in... if you end up moving Dubois, Ka- like if Kadri wants to come here, there's are always you, that big if. Are you going to be paying Kadri seventh schmel? No. At, 30, at the age of 30? No. So if you move Dubois, you're going to have even more, I guess, room for Kadri and someone else. Yes, I'm just trying to figure out who else they would bring in. Like, Cody Eakins 2.0? He's not coming to Winnipeg. <laughs> There's absolutely... He There's hated this, his time here. Yeah. It's very, very short time here. And that that's tough. I think people talk out of their ass occasionally. 
Um, obviously, there are problems in the Jets' room. I can't imagine it's as bad as he made it seem. Yeah. And he was also there in the bubble year. So it was COVID was starting, then guys were all cooped up together. So who knows how that actually translates. But there's absolutely no chance he comes back to Winnipeg. Okay, so we've been talking about trying to find right shot forwards. What about yes. Sam Gagne? I know he's old, and I know he's just like Edmonton loves their that's Sam why, Gagne. That's why I was looking at you. <laughs> but that's how you know someone grew up in Edmonton. Is they, in the year of our Lord, 2022, they want Sam Gagne. That's enough of you. I, what about Evan Rodriguez? That's Evan. one name that caught my eye. He's a center, but he's a right-handed shot, so you could slide him in on the right side. He's a thick boy, isn't he? He's not huge. No? No? 5'11", 180 something. Okay, I thought he was a big guy for some no, reason. No, but he, I mean, he had 43 points last year. Did he really? Yes. That was with uh, Pittsburgh. 19 goals, 24 assists. Yeah. So, I, I don't know where you slide him in, because there is Appleton, who's that right-handed shot, who's probably on the third line. I don't think Rodriguez is going to be that... I don't think he's a fourth-line guy. He's definitely not a second-line guy. So that spot might be taken. But someone who could potentially play in the top six, if there's room, Phil Kessel. Phil the Thrill. Phil the Thrill's still out there. Well, and, I mean... Like, the, the, actually, a little bit makes sense if you were to kind of throw him in that right... Hmm. That second wing, second right wing spot, because like Cole Perfetti right now on daily faceoff is the right wing first line. Yeah, so and it, like, like I like Cole, Cole Perfetti, but guarantee, there's no guarantees there with him there. I think I love that line, the Perfetti, Connor, Dubois, but I think you need something there in case. I mean, Cole Perfetti's a small guy. Yeah, he just is. So I think you need something there in case. I don't know, but you can't, you, you can't count out the small guys. And I mean, like, look at that's Yamamoto. True. Absolutely. Like, we can go through a list. Absolutely. I don't think just because, but, like, we've seen Perfetti get injured in the past. And who on that roster can play in the top six? Yeah, no, no, no one really. Like, I guess Appleton has, but, like, you're, again, that's a risky move. Well, one, one name that I would keep an eye on with that is a guy that, was brought over at the trade deadline, Morgan Barron. I thought he was fantastic to end the year. He went to the AHL, ripped it up. I think he has a lot of potential. I think he's going to be a really good player and maybe can even play that Andrew Kopp role to a degree. Well, well, like You don't know until he's put in that opportunity, but a few years ago we were talking about Andrew Kopp as like third line is his pinnacle. And... Three years later, he's in the he's Eastern in Detroit. Conference Finals as yeah. a second line center. Well, and earning five, like a five by five. Yeah, contract. he got paid. Good for him. Good for him. I'm happy I'm, for him. Yeah, yeah. I want to play for his. So own did uh, Sherrod. Oh, <laughs> oh that one. Happy for him. Go, go get paid. But uh, yeah. I'd be pretty choked if the Jets gave Ben Sherrod that contract. And I liked Sherrod when he was here. I just don't think he's worth that. No, no, that was a that was a big overpayment. I think that was one. That of was the, a lot. Yeah. But, I mean, for some reason, but there's... it's also now. Stevie Y, so, like, who are we to... Who yeah, are Stevie we to Y is a wizard. <laughs> I think he yeah. can get one wrong every three years. Well, and maybe he's right. Maybe their system will be better. I don't I, know, but, I, like... I'll bet that it's the right system. I, you know what I will say? Detroit wins a cup within the next four years. You think so? I really believe so. They're that's, gonna a, that's a quick turnaround. They're going to miss the playoffs this year, but I bet you within the next three they're going to be in a Stanley Cup final. I guess that's where we'll say. keep these receipts. This is on camera. This is this on is camera. I can't wait for somebody it. to pull this up and be like, wow, Angus was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sonny Milano. I mean, it, that's a name that every team in the NHL has said. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like... I it, think he's he's a solid player. I think he could step into that lineup. Again, We the Jets need more right-handed players. It's as simple as that. They have three right-handed forwards and one's a center. Um, okay. They have two right-handed defensemen. Like, it's just stop signing left-handed players. <laughs> but if we have them all, we can trade them away for Yes, lefties. we're cornering the market on lefties. <laughs> well, there's not that. enough of them in the NHL. That'll go well. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've been talking about trying to figure out 
the defense, like more or less, it's gonna stay the same. We think it's either gonna be Dylan or Logan Stanley, or like I. I think someone someone has to move to make room for one of of Billy or Sandberg or the, some sort of rotation of the two. You cannot let them sit in the minors again all year, and maybe they're. Like, you don't want to bank on injuries, but maybe the Jets are thinking, oh, well, if someone gets injured, we'll have these guys. But at what point do you say, okay, these guys are ready. Look at what Kale McCarr just did. I'm not saying either of them are even close to Kale McCarr, but Billy can move the puck. He's a good defenseman, and in a better system, he might thrive. Yeah, we got to wait on Rick to see what that system yeah, is. Yeah, there's a lot of questions around the Jets with a new coach, with them maybe trading a guy like PLD or Blake Wheeler. Maybe there's rumors that they're one of the three teams in on Kadri if they can move, make the cap space. But I just hope they don't pay a Winnipeg tax for a guy and overpay for someone who is just going to sit on the third or fourth line. Well, okay, so like I've had this idea of trading <laughs> Logan Stanley. I think he's too soft. I don't know if his defensive skill is there or even his hockey IQ is there yet. So I just... Just think you move on from Logan Stanley, and I think Samberg can more or less just fill that role super easily. You don't lose that grit like Brendan yeah. Dillon has, which the Jets desperately need. Like on that back end, who's gonna get into a scrap? Dylan DeMello? I love Dylan DeMello, but he's not a scrappy boy. That's true. But I yeah, I, I definitely see the point you have there. And then Dylan is gonna be here for a shorter amount of time, so you might have that opportunity sooner rather than later to move one of those younger guys in. I wouldn't have been mad if they had traded Brendan Dillon at the deadline, seeing just what guys like Ben Sherrod got and Brendan Dillon had term. The Jets weren't making a run. It would have been a good time to probably fleece someone on a trade. But I, I do think Logan Stanley would get you a decent amount of money in a trade. I know you want him in Edmonton for Yessie Pooley. Oh, buddy, yes. <laughs> Yessie for Logan Stanley, one for one. Let's make the hockey deal right now. Yeah. I'm calling up old Kenny Hall. I, I wouldn't be mad. I don't think I'd be mad about that trade. No, but even like a second in Logan Stanley for Yessie. I think it's a little steep on second that. Second not, not, I wouldn't go with no? the second. No, maybe a third, but I don't love that. Okay, fair enough. For a guy who had how many goals last year? Yeah, so the guy just couldn't finish, but like legitimately everyone on the ice with Yesapuli RV, if you go look at the deep stats, he made people better. So just because you're not finishing doesn't mean that you're not useful. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And that's Phil Kessel last year at 44 assists. I'm going to be on this Phil Kessel train until he signs <laughs> somewhere that's not Winnipeg. Probably Florida or something. Probably, but he just wants to eat hot dogs and relax Exactly. In the sun. I don't blame him. <laughs> like if I'm 35, 36, got a bunch of money in the bank and I got my rings, why not? Phil, you'd love the Jets dog. They're unreal. Yeah. Just oh, fantastic. Yeah, I just pop up to the big concourse and be like, I want a Jets dog. I'm sure they'll hook you pre -game, up for free. Pre-game Jets dogs. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk to Little Brown Jug. We'll get you a quick work, beer before every game. Work or, that into the contract. There we go. Little Brown Jug. <laughs> no, or, or let's say after the game. We'll have, we'll have a Jets dog and a no, Little no, Brown no, Jug we, waiting we, we have for you after the game. We have a very loose... Phil Castle. You just one beer per. Like one, per period? Yeah, per period. Mm, okay. Or yeah, it's yeah. like you play it loose, it's like beer league hockey, but you know, instead of making like nothing, it. you're you're making like big we'll, money. We'll have some we'll have some little brown jug golden nails in the in the room there for you. There we go. Little brown jug, work with us. <laughs> Bring in Phil Castle. <laughs> uh let's see what else I had. Okay. So I, I said that the Jets have Fourteen point four million dollars left in cap space. Still need to sign Appleton and PLD. PLD is not going to arbitration. Potential that he could get snagged by someone with the offer sheet. Legit thing, or is this just something that we're just well, we, we, blowing smoke we've into? We've seen that Montreal likes likes the offer sheet. I don't think PLD is going to sign a long term offer sheet because it means Winnipeg could just sign him, <laughs> and then he'd be stuck here. Uh, they'd probably end up trading him anyways, but then he's stuck wherever they trade him to. So I think me, I think potentially he would sign like a one or two year offer sheet if Montreal did it to where it was too much for Winnipeg to afford. I could see that being a situation where they let him walk if the what's coming back is good enough. But I think it would be tough for them to let him walk for anything but like 
a first, second, and third. So which is, okay, so there's no um, term limits on these. It's just basic. It's just money. Yeah, so it's yeah, all so AAV. all AAV. I mean, could you? The Canadians could kind of screw over the Jets by uh, giving him six point one for second, third. Like the well, that and that's like the Hurricanes did with uh, with two, Miami. Yeah, yeah. They they gave them just a little bit more than than uh, Montreal. Montreal but... could afford, and they had to <laughs> let him walk. It's kind of funny. It is, but the Jets still have... And I don't want to see it happen to the Jets, no. so let's not do that. But, I mean, like, Montreal's <laughs> not going to be in there and be like, you know what, $10.2 million for PLD. They'd be foolish. No, I not, like, I don't think they're getting over the 8.2 either, no. even on, like, a one-year deal. So I, I think if they went, like, just under the 8.2, so it was a first, a second, and a third, I think it would be tough for the Jets to sign him for that price unless they were, again, just going to try and move him. But you, I, I think you need to get a guy who's going to factor in this year for PLD, or you need to what? blow it up. I don't think you can let PLD walk for draft picks and not just say, okay, we need to rebuild, which they're not going to do because Rick Bonus said, I'm not coming to a rebuild. That would be a horrible look for the Jets if they signed him as their coach and then just went, yeah, we're going to rebuild. Uh, so currently, the Montreal Canadiens have one point two million dollars in cap space. So are you guys? Are, are, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where everyone's coming up with these numbers. Like, yeah, they'll tr- like definitely not Brennan Gallagher for PLD, Josh Anderson, and like others. Nick Suzuki's got years. I know that's one name that the Jets wanted, but I don't think that's going to happen. Montreal not moves Nick Suzuki. I want Cole Caulfield. <laughs> Cole Caulfield and Josh, uh, Anderson. Josh Anderson and 2014 Carey Price. There we go. But for like with them retaining salary, 75 <laughs> percent of Price's salary. You know what? <laughs> if if he wasn't a left handed guy, I'd be chasing uh, Joel Edmondson. I the the Jets defense is fine. Yeah, it's fine. I know, but like, it's like he's just one of those sexy like, names. The that Jets I don't like. need to add D. They need to get rid of them. And like, that's a name I liked in free agency was John Klingberg, but again, the Jets don't need more defensemen, they need less. They need more forwards, they need a good... Like, if if you can get PLD to stay, I like the Jets' top six right now. Yeah. Connor, PLD, uh, Perfetti on the first line, Ehlers, Wheeler, Shifley on the second line, but I again, I don't think... Both Wheeler and PLD will be on the Jets roster to start the season. Well, and it's like the one thing that I kind of think that has been unfairly dealt with Wheeler here is he he was told by the Jets go facilitate your own trade, and then was told yeah, but we're not going to be retaining any of your salary. I mean, the dude's in his that makes it nearly impossible. Yeah, and it's like so he can go to five teams, which he has been, which is well, okay, if, if he's facilitating, it, he could waive it and go to any team he wanted. In yeah, reality, if but, he really wanted out of Winnipeg. But the way that the um, contract works is he had five teams that he's willing to move yes. to, yes, and he has to have those names down on a piece of paper by whenever. I don't know what the date is, but I think it was July first. So you got five teams you can move to that you're willing to move to, and then. I don't know. I just it's foolishness again in my mind where they're just like, yeah, we might bring you back and like I just yeah, I'm, I'm irked. <laughs> irked is the term. <laughs> yeah, you you almost have to go all in or all out and the Jets are kind of just dancing in the middle, which I don't think is a good choice. No, and it like it leaves a sour taste in everyone's mouth in the locker room, I think. Yeah. Where it's just like again, Well, there's there's obviously issues there yeah. and I think they need to be addressed. And again, maybe a Rick Bonus, that might be a reason they didn't bring in a younger coach like a Pascal Vincent, is because they needed a more experienced voice to kind of rein in the issues in the room. Who knows what yeah. the actual reason is, but... Yeah, who knows? Like, the new bench boss might clear up a lot of space, like, a lot of issues immediately. And I've, I've been preaching this for a while. Just remove the captaincy from Blake Wheeler. Like, the guy seems stressed. I think it. that... I Yeah, I, I don't know... If he's a good, he's a very good hockey player. Yep. I don't know if he's the captain because, or a good captain. He, when things are going good, he's great. As soon as things are bad, your captain needs to be the guy to step up and say, and bring the team together. And it doesn't seem like Wheeler does that. 
he gets a little bitchy to the media. He kind of brushes them off. If he gets asked a tough question, he acts like a victim. I mean, there's a reason you're getting paid millions of dollars to play hockey. There's a reason you have the C on your chest. And unfortunately, that's going to come with some tough questions. And those are things you're going to need to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great hockey player. And like I've worked with, like I've talked about this a lot, but blue collar guys, there are guys who are foremans, who should not be foremans, who are phenomenal at whatever they do. Just give them more money. Don't worry about the leadership role. Give it to somebody that can understand how to talk to people. And just don't think Wheeler has that ability. And it's like nothing against him. It's just some people aren't born to deal with tough things like that. They just want to work. Yeah. And I get it, that Wheeler wanted to be the guy to hoist the cup for Winnipeg. But and I'd love to see him do that. Yeah. But I just, the C on his chest needs to go. And I think, like, legitimately, if he can let that go, he will be a better player on the ice. I wonder if, and I, I know I keep going back to the new coach, maybe it'll fix everything, but <laughs> I wonder if a coach that isn't going to baby Wheeler will be a good thing for him in the long run. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's going to talk to him and say, hey, you need to, when you get asked these questions, you're the leader, you're you're the face of the franchise. You need to answer these questions. I guess this is, I guess this might be an internet question, but does the, do the Jets have like a psychologist in the room? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> like, I, I know that's. I'm like, sure they do. I can't imagine there's any professional sports team nowadays that doesn't. Yeah, because it's like I'd just be interested to know like what's going on in the mind of Wheeler because I think like there just might be that stress. So that's I, I don't know if he fits back into that room comfortably if, if he's still a captain next year if he's still around. He'll be the captain if he's still around. They're not stripping him of the C. It's not a was a Dustin Brown situation. <laughs> Because there's no Anze Kopitar that I think stands above the rest, deserving that. Have you that. not watched Kyle Connor interviews? That guy will say it straight. That is true. I, I well, I think like you, before all this PLD stuff happened with him wanting out, I thought he's gonna wear the C for the Jets as soon as Blake Wheeler no longer has it. But I don't think he's gonna be there at that point. So. Sad. Yep. Yeah. I think Adam Lowry should have a letter on his jersey. Oh, hot. Does he not? No, oh. it's uh, Morrissey, Shifley, and Wheeler. The Jets notoriously have always just had three. Yeah. It's always been the it should one be. and two. Yeah, it should be Connor, <laughs> Lowry, and... I mean, it could be worse. You could be the New York Rangers and have like six assistant <laughs> captains and no one's able to keep track. Yeah. <laughs> New York. What a gong show's going on there, too. Like, was, I think yeah. they're going to regress hard. I think I think they 100% will. Yeah. They lost too many pieces. And Gallant just doesn't seem to have control over the team anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, but you have that goalie. You have that guy who can win you games night in and night out. But I think that's a danger. Like, it's like the danger of having Hellebuck. It's your, your team is not good enough, but your goalie can win you game after game after game. And that's fantastic for the fan base to keep the morale up, but... After a certain point, you realize you're a, bo- you're a middle-tier team all because your goalie is too good and he can win you too many games every year. But I, I, That's going to be the Jets' issue. It's like, if you guys want to tank for Bedard, you have to tank for Bedard. If you don't want to tank, you can't do it. Yeah, I, but I, I almost... I hesitate to say it, but I do think the Jets have a very talented roster. They do, and they it's so frustrating. They had nine guys with double-digit goals last year. That's... That's... That's impressive. Phenomenal. They just need a, like, they honestly just need a defender that can score for them, too. And all of a sudden, like, this Josh team... Morrissey had 12 goals. Did he really? I think, I think Neil Pionk's going to take a step. He he regressed last year. Yeah. He had a tough season. I think he has an opportunity to show what he can do. If Like, so two years ago, Morrissey had a tough year. He was he had personal family stuff going on. It felt, feel for the guy 100%. Mm-hmm. And then he, last year he stepped up and he showed what he can do. And he, I think he's a good leader as well. I think Neil Pionk was really good two years ago. He lost Derek Forbert, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but he regressed last year. And I think Pionk could show that he could come back this year. And if Pionk and Morrissey can both play, to, play well, I know they don't play together. But those are two potential top pairing guys in your first two pairs. So whoever's playing with them, if they both play well, are going to be, like, it's that's going to be a good top four. Yeah. You just need to figure out how that works and figure out getting both of them to have good seasons at the same time. 
Yeah, like he on like that year that he was really good when he just stopped McDavid every day. He was week. phenomenal. So much years fun ago. to watch Oilers fans lose their mind. <laughs> uh, Nate Schmidt, the captain of Smiles, I think he's going to be pretty even on the year. Yeah, I I love Nate Schmidt. How can you not? No, just yeah. look at him. Hear him interviewed. He, I think he's great for the team. I think he's great for the league. Quite frankly. And I, yeah, I, th- I think he's. Uh, I think he'll have a good year. We'll get to that question next week because that brings me to something that I want to talk about. But that's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we've talked about what what the hell is going on. What is Chevel Dale's plan moving forward? Like, because it, it doesn't feel like there's a coherent plan. Do you have any clues <sighs> on what the hell's happening here? <laughs> I I'm not. I, again, I think teams, including the Jets, are waiting to see where Nazem Kadri goes. And that's kind of going to dictate what they do. If the Jets think they can move PLD and get Kadri to be that second line center, but you can't move PLD without having someone there to step into that role. But it's only Montreal that wants PLD. And Montreal fans are just screaming and hollering. They're like, yeah, you guys get nothing for PLD. Yeah. And it's just like. I don't think we listen to the fans. I think, including the two people sitting right here. Hockey fans are dumb. <laughs> it's just true. Twitter we're hockey gonna, fans are the best. We're going to bitch and complain about every little thing our team does. But ultimately, like, I think you have to figure Shevel Day off has a plan. Like, you can't... He, it's not like he's just, but oh, he, I forgot to do this. I'm, like, I'm... Oh, no, I went into the offseason without any coherent plan. There's obviously something going on. And he's... His entire career with the Jets, at least has always been holding everything he does tight. No one knows what's going on in that front office because Sheldon Alf has always been super secretive and we can speculate all day long, oh, the Jets are going to bring in this guy, the Jets are going to bring in this guy. No one has any idea except for hopefully hopefully, Kevin Sheldon Alf. <laughs> you got to hope he knows what's going on and he knows what he's doing. I, yeah, I guess it's like last year in the, the pandemic, we kind of forget about a lot of things. But it was like last year, we had Brandon Dale and Nate Schmidt sign, and I was just like, that was... Those were two, in my opinion, I was pumped about those trades. Obviously, the season didn't go well, but I thought like, okay, when they made those trades, I looked at the Jets roster, I looked at how long every player had left, and I thought, we have a three-year window to do some damage. Missed the playoffs in the fir- first year, but... I, I do think that core of players can make it back to the playoffs. And when you have a goaltender like Connor Hellebuck and hopefully a system that Rick Bonus is bringing to this team that is defensive based, like they need to play better. The Jets need to play better in their own zone and they have the talent to score. So if you play better in your own zone, you get into the playoffs. I just think maybe one change on D, whether it's having Logan Stanley and Billy rotate a bit more. Yeah. I just think there needs to be something else on the back end that changes. Um, Do you just go for a big splash on the back end? Because like, that's almost what it seemed like it was. Like, people, like guys were just mad at each other, and just because there was a lot of defensive miscues, it seemed like. Yeah, I, I don't know. I... Again, again, I think a whole new system is coming to the Jets. They haven't had a defensive-minded system ever, in my recollection. I don't think Claude Noel did. I don't... Paul Maurice never really had a good defensive system. Charlie Huddy's been running the D for (laughs) 16 years. However long the Jets have been in town. So now it's going to be different. And we're going to see what a... We're going to see a different brand of hockey this year. And maybe that will help the Jets kind of find their identity and figure out so how they maybe, play. Maybe people need to pump the brakes on this whole, although sky is falling in Winnipeg. I think so. I, like the everyone. Jets barely missed the playoffs on a very off year. Yeah, and like... like A coach Dave, resigning. Dave Lowry said it himself, this year was a pure anomaly for so many guys. And like, Absolutely. And like at the time, I didn't agree with him, but now I've been looking back at it. It's like, yeah, there were more guys on that team that had an anomaly year that shouldn't have. And and again, it's hard to oh, there, it was an off year. Yeah, but you're a professional hockey player. You shouldn't be like. You hope that twenty guys on the team don't have an off year all at the same time. <laughs> and if they do, there's definitely 
something going on in the background that could be causing issues. But I don't think Rick Bonus comes to Winnipeg if he looks at that team and thinks, oh, they need to make major roster changes. No, not at all. Bonus will, uh, he wants to win. He's yeah. in his 60s. He deserves to win at this point. <laughs> he made the cup finals a few years ago. Yeah. He's, he's ready to win. He is. I, yeah, I just, the more and more I'm looking at this, I don't, like every single Winnipeg broadcaster just hit the panic button, hit the panic button, hit the panic button. And honestly, I, I think returning it back to what it is is not the worst idea. I don't, yeah. Like, I, I, know. I, I know I'm it, so I know back it's... and forth on it because you really, you don't know how guys are going to react. We might get to the start of the season and guys aren't buying into the new system. And maybe the room really was the issue. Mm -hmm. But no one likes losing. And the Jets were losing last year. So obviously the room's not going to be... Happen. Like, you don't want to see guys celebrating after a loss. So, yeah, the room looked like it was a major issue, but maybe maybe a couple wins. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I heard someone say that it's like, la like during the 2021 season that the Jets wouldn't have made the playoffs if they were, if the league was running regularly in 2021. Do you, do you did you buy into that? Like I definitely don't. Like I think the Jets had a genuine chance last, uh, like the year prior. Yeah, I mean they swept Edmonton. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got swept. But we won't talk. We about don't that. talk they, about they, the second round. They had like twelve days off. Yeah, that's too long. Way too long. Yeah, four game suspension. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> East Coast media. Yeah. Um, no, I, I do think that with the guys they have in place, I, I don't think blowing it up is the right thing to do, but I do think you need to... So, I, I think there are still, like, some small minor changes. Yeah. Or tweaks, or, like, a small... Well, like, like, a reliable signing that needs to be made. Yeah, well, I mean, like, losing out on Paul Stastny was huge. Is going to be huge. The guy just scored 20 goals. Yeah. That's 20 goals out of your lineup. And you're going to hope to replace that with Mason Appleton and or Cole Perfetti. Like I like I like I think, Cole Perfetti I think Cole and I want to believe in him, but he's I think he's having a breakout this year though. If he if he gets the chance to play, did like just watching him play is so much it's fun. So his much vision, fun. his passing is unbelievable. He's gonna find Kyle Connor in spots that other people don't find Kyle like, Connor. He could find Owen Power in some weird spots during the World Juniors in December. That was fun to watch. So I'm fun. sad he's not gonna be back there. Canada's gonna be a worse team because Perfetti's not playing. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for the World Juniors. It'd be nice if uh, somebody could hook us up with some flights to Edmonton. Maybe we could go watch some World Junior action out there. Come on, someone's got to have a couple dollars lying around. Yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> we, we don't. I don't have a real job at that point, so like fly me I to do. Edmonton. You can quit your real job. No, <laughs> no someone will pay us. That's how it all works out. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Okay, last one for the day, and then uh, we'll shut her down and come back next Sunday. Uh, what's a super toxic hockey fans trying to run teams out of the city? Not even just players out of the city. The entire organization. Because I've seen so many people be like, yeah, the Jets the Jets are gone from Winnipeg in the next 5, 10 years. Like, get banned. If yeah. Arizona's not leaving, Winnipeg's not leaving. You need new friends. It's you just need the, to talk to different people. Because it, it, that's absolutely literally, ridiculous. It's literally it's, toxic people on TikTok and Twitter. So I know well, their opinions the same, don't matter. It's the same as problems in every facet of life. It's the vocal minority getting louder than everyone else, screaming, crying, probably not real Jets fans. I think most of them are Montreal fans. Exactly. So they can kick rocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no. The Jets, are, the Jets are here to stay. You're not going to move a franchise after 15 years just because a few less tickets are being sold. That's just not going to happen. Well, well, and Winnipeg's got, like, this weird circumstance where, you know, we had harder lockdowns than most people, and... Yeah, and, I mean, there's also... <clears throat> Winnipeg, as a whole, just doesn't have as much money as other cities. And, and there's a lot of growth in Winnipeg right now. The All the buildings going up downtown, the city's expanding, there's more stuff in the town. When the Jets came to Winnipeg in 2011, there was nothing. There was not a whole lot going on. And since then, you've seen True North Square. You've seen 300 Main, the Alt Hotel. You've seen all of these buildings start to shoot up. And there's more coming. Like, there's more parts to True North Square that are coming. So, 
I think, like, the Jets are here to stay. There's not a doubt in my mind. You don't build a ducky statue if you're going to move the team. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I will personally fight whoever tries to steal the Jets out of Winnipeg. It's not going to happen. It better not, because I am just so sick and tired. Winnipeg sucks. It's the yeah. lamest excuse in the we world. We have David Thompson. We He's Dave. not going to let the Jets no. move. Or There's like, no way. Growing up in Edmonton, I oh, like Edmonton, Winnipeg are very. Oh, sick. sorry. Yeah, sorry. I grew up, in the wrong, <laughs> grew up in the wrong province, apparently. <laughs> uh, but like, it's just they're both dark, cold cities in the winter. They're minus forty. They suck in the winter. Like you, you know this. Everyone knows yep. it. But it's just like, you get to the certain point and you're like, this place is pretty sweet. And I just, I think anyone that says Winnipeg sucks doesn't really understand how great the city is. It's like people that don't bother going out to St. Boniface to enjoy a concert on a Thursday night. Someone saw one article that said Winnipeg was colder than Mars one day. <laughs> and they thought, oh, that city sucks. Yeah. Like, or, and, and then there was that one San Jose Shark player who was like, oh, their Wi-Fi sucks. Yeah. What? There's... 750,000 people in Winnipeg. It's a big enough city to have Wi-Fi, you ass. Yeah. Like, you're well, such an idiot. It, it sucked for one second. I'm sure it sucks other places, too. Yeah. Well, what are like, you talking about? The other thing is people... Although, the, we don't have an airport, so... Fuck off with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, once we get an airport, we'll, we'll be able to keep a hawk. Our team. Greyhound bus terminal is pretty damn great. Yeah, Thank uh, you very much. Teams fly into Fargo, North Dakota, and then bus to Winnipeg. <laughs> Uh, there was C CTV Edmonton actually ran that story, eh? It's phenomenal. <laughs> I loved it. Just uh, ridiculous. But yeah, no, I just think like people hear about how dangerous and dirty it is. It's like, yeah. But again, it's it's Winnipeg. You learn to love it. Like this It's stuff, a great city. It really it is. is. Anyone that says differently just doesn't appreciate it. Okay. That's a that's we it. need to end it. That yeah, was, we're um, just gonna be talking about Winnipeg for a while. It's pretty so. cool. Uh, yeah, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Tell tell somebody about this. Make sure to like and share. Do all that good stuff. Send it to your friends. S send it to your friends. Tell your friends to send it to their friends. Yeah, send it down the line. And um, yeah, we look forward to coming back next week with some more off-season. Try to figure out what the hell is going on with the Jets. Maybe we'll have something more to talk about next week. Maybe there will be an actual move and it won't just be all speculation for almost an hour. But we'll figure that one out next week. Absolutely. All right. Catch you guys around, and uh, until next time. See Peace. Ya.